Afternoon, everybody. Uh, I have a secret first. This is what Scotland looks like from space. You may have never been in space, but this is actually what it looks like. It's actually tartan. The, it's divided neatly into the health boards so that you can see which is which by the colour of the different tartans. The, this is how we design our healthcare system, not with the tartan, but with the healthcare delivery system. The delivery systems are responsible for health of the population of that region. They're responsible for primary care, secondary care, public health. The whole thing in an integrated, not fixed, please don't think it's nirvana, but it, it, at some level, an integrated system. The, the piece that's in, in the center of the slide with the box around it, that's the Shetland Islands. It doesn't actually have a fence around it. Although if you've ever been, you'll know that it's tempting to put a box around it. We've tried to sell them to the Norwegians, but the Norwegians won't take them. It, it, the reason there's a box around it is, in reality, the geography is so huge that it would be somewhere in the middle of the ceiling. It's, it's as near to Oslo as it is to Edinburgh, hence our attempt to sell it to the Norwegians. It, it's a very small... I, I use it to illustrate the fact that it is one health board. It is just a few tens of thousands of people. It has one tiny hospital. And Glasgow, which is our biggest city, one and a half million people, nine acute hospitals, a huge public health system, hundreds and hundreds of primary care facilities, and yet it's one health board too. So our, our system is disparate, but, but centrally controlled and locally managed. We also have a quality strategy, a quality strategy that was written in May 2010 under the leadership of Derek Feely, who was the head of policy then and is now the chief executive for the next few weeks. He's probably in the room. Those of you who were here yesterday morning will have learned that he's going to be executive vice president at IHI. A huge loss for Scotland. And if your CV is handy, I'll receive applications at the end. If you wish to be the NHS Scotland chief executive, you maybe should wait and see what we're doing first before you decide to apply. We have some aims inside that uh, quality strategy to deliver the highest quality healthcare services to the people of Scotland to be recognized as world leading. We have three ambitions inside that quality strategy. These are not unusual for the, for the world just now. A lot of people have something like this. You, you may think that the safe one is a little bit unique. We, we've said in Scotland that our ambition is no avoidable harm. The person-centered one is the one that's revolutionary and the one we're beginning to work on more systematically just now about mutually beneficial partnerships. Our, our way of designing that is to use IHI's model, IHI's AAA model. We, we believe we gave IHI the AAA, my IHI believe they gave it to us. It's a debate that we'll have forever, probably. But fundamentally, it's about care experience, safe, person-centered, effective, timely. So how is it for the individual patient and family? But it's all very well fixing it for the patient and family if they're going back to a damp house and no green space and unsafe streets. So you have to do something for the population and where that population lives, and you have to do it within the envelope of resource that you're given. So that's the IHI triple aim, and that's the guiding model that Scotland is now using on that health and social care quality journey. Let me just illustrate it with a couple of examples. And uh, each of us have chosen different examples to show you. We could equally, I could equally show you our capacity building exercise. Wales chose to do that for you. I'm gonna show you safety and then I'm going to show you a little bit of our ambition towards early years, the first five years of life. So this is our Scottish Patient Safety Programme. Some of you will have seen these logos before. The piece that you're used to hearing about is the top logo, the Acute Care Safety Programme, the safety programme inside the 30-odd acute hospitals in Scotland. A relatively well-known set of interventions around critical care bundles, early warning scoring and rescue, general ward, things like cannula bundles, you, you get the idea, medicines reconciliation. That's been going for five years, three months. It's had some success. I'll show you a little bit of data shortly that although we can't attribute it exactly to the safety program, it has happened during the time of the safety program. That's a subtle difference. I'll let you interpret it as you please. We now have three other big pieces of work. On the left-hand side of the slide, maternity, pediatrics, and neonates, one big safety program for all of that called the Maternity Quality Care Collaborative. And some of the leaders of that are in the room. If you want to speak to them, come to the front at the end or go to the NHS Scotland stand, which you can't miss just on the left of the coffee. Some of them will be there 
for you if you wish to talk about the interventions and how we're doing that. And then two others. Mental health, which has been around for about a year now. We're on learning session three of that around drugs, around suicide prevention, around care journeys. And then our most recent son of the safety programme is our primary care work. The most probably revolutionary of all, a thousand general medical practices in Scotland, partly being paid to do safety or incentivised to do safety inside the Scottish GP contract there will be a, an ability to do trigger tool surveys and be paid to do so and to do culture surveys, safety culture surveys for the first time in those 1,000 general practices and then not paid inside a collaborative to do test results, to do medicines, to do high risk medications etc. Again the leaders of those events, those programs are here also so if you want to hear more about them please either come and see me and I'll point you in the right direction or go to the stand and they'll I've just sent a whole load of people to the stand who they weren't expecting but hey that's the privilege of being on the stage let me show you just some, some data the safety program hasn't fixed C. difficile but C. difficile has fallen by 80% that's partly as a result of some of the safety program interventions it's partly a result of antibiotic stewardship it's partly as a result of the chief nurses' work in Scotland, a huge amount of uh, multidisciplinary work to reduce C. difficile over the last few years. But it's not the whole story. There's the MRSA story down 87% nearly. HSMR is a little controversial in the present climate, but let me have a go. Brian Jarman may be in the room, so I better be careful. This is Scotland's HSMR model. I don't claim it to be anything else other than a rock you might want to lift if it tells you something it's not a perfect piece of data but it does tell you something the dotted line is where the safety program began where we set our baseline the most recent data is up to the end of September 2012 it's a 12.5% reduction in hospital standardised mortality in Scotland that's 8,500 less than expected deaths over that 4 year 9 month period during the time of the safety program I can't draw you a line from the safety program and tell you that's what did this. Uh, my, my instinct is it did some of it. And this is why I think I can now say that with some authority. This takes a little bit of explaining, so just I'm going to go quick, but stay with me. This is 10 years worth of HSMR from before, during, and now of the safety program. So this data starts in January, in October 2002, long before the safety program began. We had a secular trend of 1.5%, 1.4% over those eight years. That's about the secular trend in mortality reduction you see in most Western countries. We started the safety program two years before that stops. Okay? So January 2008, we started in one ward, one theatre, one critical care unit. It didn't achieve anything. Of course it didn't. It's only in one ward. It didn't do anything to mortality. Two years after the safety program began, we've trebled the reduction in hospital standardised mortality. The annual reduction in hospital standardised mortality is now 4.2%. I think that's the first data I can probably attribute to something new. Something is different. Now that, I think, is cultural change brought on by a whole lot of stuff. A whole lot of surgical interventions that are different. A whole lot of safety stuff that is new. Person-centred care being more established. But something is different. I, I, I don't know what, but I know something is new. And let me finish with this. this you, if you heard Maureen Bissignano's talk yesterday morning, you heard her very kindly talk about our early years work. Having learned and studied improvement science inside patient safety and tried it in other elements of the healthcare system, we're now trying to break down those healthcare walls and move out into a multi-agency environment. Other people have tried this. We, we don't know of anybody who's tried it at our scale across a whole country. And again, the leaders of this uh, work will either be here or not far away, they're at the conference. Our, our intention is to make Scotland the best place to grow up in the world. The reason for that is twofold. The first obvious thing is that when kids have bad lives in their first five years, they have developmental delay. That's relatively obvious. If they are abused, if they live in damp housing, if they suffer messy divorces, if stuff happens that is risky, they tend to develop poorly. Not always, but often. The more unexpected thing is that those same risk factors also cause them adult disease. So you tend to have your stroke at 40 instead of 80, or your heart attack at 35 instead of 65. So those first five years of life are really crucial, and our Chief Medical Officer, Sir Harry Burns, has made it his life's work 
to try and help and fix those first five years of life. And that's what we're now trying to do. This is what the Early Years Collaborative is. We believe it's the world's first national multi-agency quality improvement collaborative working across all agencies. So when you bring the safety collaborative in a room, you bring critical care doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, chief executives in a big room, not unlike this, big round tables. We've just had learning session one of the Early Years Collaborative. The tables were policemen, social workers, teachers, nursery educators, obstetricians, midwives, social workers, other early years workers, local authority chief executives, and healthcare chief executives. It was an entirely different cohort of people, for one, that never meet. So the first step was to get those 900 people in a room and bring them round the round tables. That was our first step. This is the ambition, best place to grow up. These are our numerical aims. You can see these slides and study them over time. The first one is mortality reduction. 600 children die a year in Scotland in their first year of life. We have 300 stillbirths and 300 children who die in the first 12 months of their life. We want to reduce that by as much as we can. Our aim is to reduce it by 15%. And then two other aims about kids being developmentally ready at 30 months and then ready to learn when they get to school in age four and a half, five. This is my favourite new slide. This is measurement in the Early Years Collaborative. It's not a fancy Excel spreadsheet. It's not a fancy database. It's a nursery who give out a bedtime bear to get kids' bedtime stories. They believe, and the evidence says, if the kid gets a bedtime story, the kid is better. Now, that's not going to fix the developmental delay in itself, but this is the first run chart that they sent us in the mail the week after the learning session. This is two data points with an annotated arrow that says intro of bedtime bear. And the kids in that nursery went from 65% of them getting a bedtime story to 75% of them getting a bedtime story in a week. I think that run chart tells you more about the early years collaborative than I could tell you by showing you the measurement plan and the driver diagrams, which we have, but it's my favourite new slide about measurement. So this is Scotland's philosophy. I don't know if that's how you live your lives. We, we don't lack ambition in Scotland, and we're not scared. I'll finish just with one brief story, and I told this story yesterday. If you Forgive me if you were in my session yesterday, but I, I showed this slide a few weeks ago, and there was a little earnest group of participants at the end, and one of them came up to me and said, he was very, I thought he was going to ask me something about improvement science, and he said, you know that penguins and polar bears, they're never on the same ice cap. That, you shouldn't really use that picture. And I, I said, is that really your problem with that picture? There's a penguin with symbols. And you have a natural history problem with the penguins and the... Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>